Adonijah or Solomon. In our last story, we witnessed David's poor decisions in light of his pride. The man once responsible for protecting Israel had put them in distress and taken improper ownership over them. However, David's heart was always quick to conviction, and he repented before God and the people. Now it is time to crown a new king. A brother of favor and a brother of jealousy rival for the throne, and the same story since Cain and Abel is threatened to repeat itself. Inspired by the book of First Kings. Hello, this is Jack Graham with today's episode of The Bible in a Year. In our previous reading, we saw how David fell to insecurity and a need for control rather than trusting God. He ordered a census of the people, but this grieved the Lord. And though he repented, David was given a choice of three punishment, and he chose a punishment that would affect his own people rather than himself alone. As a result, thousands of Israelites died because of David's disobedience. But David saw his sin and cried out to the Lord and interceded for Israel and asked that God would stay his hand of judgment. And once again, he is trusting God and is shepherding his people God's way. Today, we'll hear about the choice of David's successor. Two brothers very different from each other stand as candidates for the role of the king of Israel. Once again, as we've seen again and again since the first brothers, Cain and Abel, walked on the earth, that jealousy and rivalry threatens all that is good. Let's listen now to today's reading. Despite the warm summer night laying over Israel like a blanket, David shivered in his bed. His bones creaked and his body was continually cold. At night he moaned and shifted, doing anything to keep warm. No matter how many blankets covered him, he could not heat himself up. His advisors took pity on their aging king and sent for some young servant girls to lay beside him to keep him warm. They found a beautiful young girl named Abishag. Her beauty was unmatched, and she was kind to the king. David had no sexual relations with her. She was his caregiver, and he honored her as such. David's time as king was coming to a close, and there was a restlessness among Israel. Solomon was David's choice to take over the throne. He was about nineteen at the time, but displayed attributes David found noble in a king. He was wise, humble, and merciful. He loved the Lord and drew close to him day by day. He was not a warrior like David was. No, Solomon spent most of his time among scrolls, reading history, poetry, and great literature. Instead of training with a sword, Solomon would often debate in the halls with prophets, priests, and scholars. David knew that Solomon would lead Israel into a new era of flourishing. Instead of being a warlord, he would be a great politician, governor, and aid to the world. However, not all were thrilled to see Solomon become king. David's older son, Adonijah, exalted himself among his friends. If the throne is not given to me, I shall take it, Adonijah said. He gathered chariots and fifty men to posture in front of David. Adonijah stood over his father and told him of what he was doing. David could hardly sit up on his bed, let alone refute his son who was trying to become king. Years of battle had weakened his bones. Why are you doing this? David asked. Adonijah said nothing to David. Instead, he left the room, leaving his father to sulk helplessly. David had accomplished many great things in his life. He had conquered kingdoms, slain giants, and brought an entire nation into a period of prosperity and safety. However, David was an absent father and poor disciplinarian. Just like Absalom before him, Adonijah was doing what was right in his own eyes. He cared not about what his father thought. An ancient evil once again lurked in the corners of Adonijah's mind, the heart of Cain. Adonijah was going to kill his brother Solomon. Adonijah took Joab, David's general, and Abiathar, one of the priests. The two of them agreed to support Adonijah in his efforts to become king. However, David's council, Zadok and Nathan, the priests, Benaiah, Shimei, and David's bodyguard refused to support him. Instead, they vowed to protect Solomon. Adonijah gathered some of the richest men in Israel for a sacrifice and coronation. However, he left out Nathan, Benaiah, and the bodyguard. 
Nathan caught word of Adonijah's coronation as king and went straight to Bathsheba, Solomon's mother. Adonijah is making himself king in front of the nobles of Israel. Your husband does not know anything about it. Bathsheba froze where she stood, afraid of what would befall her and Solomon if Adonijah became king. You need to go to David and have him vow before the council that Solomon is to become king. Bathsheba did not cry, nor did she worry. Instead, with confidence, she drew near to the king's bedroom. The two of them had not spoken in quite some time. She slowly opened the door. The room smelled of cedar and incense. She looked around the room and found Abishag patting David's head with a warm cloth. Bathsheba looked at David. His hair was gray and his face cracked like worn leather. She looked at David's chest. His once strong and broad chest was now struggling for each breath. Tears slowly dripped down Bathsheba's face as she looked at her husband. She bowed beside him and held his hand. David opened his eyes and turned his head to see his wife beside him. They looked at one another. David wore a handsome grin on his face when he looked at her. What can I do for you? David whispered. Bathsheba touched his face and held his hand. My lord, you made a vow that Solomon would become king after you. However, Adonijah is making himself king right under your nose. All the nobles gather with him for a celebration. She rose to her feet and looked down at David. The kingdom is waiting for you to announce was king. If you do not act, Solomon and I will be killed. David stared at Bathsheba for a moment. Then a knock on his door came from the entrance of the room. Nathan the prophet poked his head in through the door and slowly entered in. My lord he said, bowing. Have you appointed Adonijah as king? He is holding a celebration now. He has not invited me or any of your officials. Have you really not told us? David sat up in his bed and stood to his feet. His legs shook and his body trembled. David raised his chin up high and puffed out his chest. As my lord and savior lives, Solomon will be the next king of Israel. Bathsheba bowed to him and thanked him. After this, David ordered Zodak, the priest, and Benaiah to come forward. He summoned them from Adonijah's party, and they came before the king. David looked at them with a piercing gaze. David stretched out his arm and pointed to them, saying, You will take Solomon and all my officials down to Gihon Spring. He will ride on my mule, and you will anoint him as king with Nathan. You will summon men to blow ram's horns and shout, Long live King Solomon! Then you will bring him back here to sit on the throne. David paused for a moment and said one final time, He is the new king of Israel. So the two men left and gathered all the people for Solomon's coronation as king of Israel. Adonijah was enjoying his feast among his friends. Music, dancing, and lewdness filled the halls as Adonijah basked in his own glory. He struck handsome smiles at the women in attendance, drank his wine, and sat back to enjoy his future as king. Then the sound of music was drowned out by ram's horns flooding in through the city streets. Adonijah ran outside to see a parade of people following the sound of the horns. Adonijah watched as Solomon descended down a hill into the city with a procession of dancing, shouting, and instruments. The entire city stood in awe. Solomon gave a humble shrug and waved to the people. His smile was different than his brother's. While Adonijah's smile was filled with self-love and smugness, Solomon genuinely cared about the people he was present with. The news of Solomon's kingship caused panic in the party of Adonijah. They went from celebrating their king to feasting as traitors. They scattered, and Adonijah watched as his fame disappeared before his very eyes. Fear filled his mind, and he ran with all of his might to the altar of God and clung on to the horns at the altar as a symbol of sanctuary. He cowered in fear, not leaving the corner of the room. He knew that no one could harm him as long as he remained there. The priests approached him, but Adonijah spat and yelled, Nobody touch me! I will not leave unless King Solomon swears he will not kill me! Word came to Solomon, he thought deeply for many moments. Solomon was young, but incredibly wise and thoughtful. He knew that execution would make him seem petty and insecure. He also knew that he could not trust his brother fully. So Solomon gave Adonijah a proposition. If he serves me loyally, 
not a hair on his head will be touched. However, the second trouble arises out of him, his head will fall onto the floor. Adonijah respected Solomon's wishes and left into solitude at Solomon's dismissal. The sun slowly set over the empire of David, the giant slayer and anointed one of God. Tomorrow, a new day would arise, a day of worship, wisdom, and a willingness to expand Israel's influence beyond the east. Solomon was young, even younger than his father when he became king. However, he was not without a deep counsel of knowledge. Solomon's mind would prove to be an excellent tool in the hands of God to create a new era in Israel. David the warrior would soon be dead. Now, it was time for Solomon the philosopher. We begin today's scripture with an old and failing King David. His body is not what it used to be, and he could barely keep himself warm in his bed. But his mind was still sharp and his heart was still dedicated to the Lord, intent to fulfill God's plans for Israel. He knows that it's time for a changing of the guard, time for a new king to rise. And his young son Solomon is his top pick. You see, even though Solomon was very young, just 19 years of age, he had already displayed wisdom beyond his years. And David knew that what Israel needed now was not a warrior king, but a wise one. Of course, it wouldn't be that easy. Adonijah, David's oldest living son, wanted the throne for himself, and he felt it was his right, and he saw an opportunity to seize power now that his father was old and bedridden. So he made plans to essentially crown himself king as soon as he had the opportunity, and he gathered support for himself from among David's armies and priests. Adonijah's attitude was one of entitlement and he was ready to subvert God's plans to get his own way, much like his brother Absalom had done years before when he tried to overthrow his father David. Sadly, this was very much the fruit of David's own failure to be a faithful parent. Listen to what 1 Kings 1.6 says of David's relationship with Adonijah, his son. His father had never at any time displeased him by saying, Why have you done thus and so? For all of his greatness as king, perhaps David's greatest failing was as a father. He was definitely not a strong leader for his family, and he did not train up his children as a father should, disciplining them when they did wrong and encouraging them when they did what was right. And so, his sight set on the throne, Adonijah planned a feast to celebrate his coronation. It's interesting when you read who was on the invite list and who wasn't. Adonijah left out Nathan the prophet, Solomon and his mighty men, and David's bodyguard. If there was any doubt that Adonijah's actions were malicious and underhanded, even murderous, this put those questions to rest. When Nathan told Solomon's mother Bathsheba what was going on, she was understandably troubled. She knew that if Adonijah became king, her life, and especially her son's life, would be in grave danger. Solomon, after all, was God's choice to be king, and Adonijah knew this. So Solomon would be a threat that would need to be removed. Nathan advises Bathsheba to go to David and have him reaffirm his vow to make Solomon king. He would also go to David to confirm that Adonijah was trying to rise to power. Bathsheba went to David and did just as Nathan advised. And when Nathan came and asked David if he really intended for his oldest son to be the king, David gathered his strength to protect God's kingdom one more time. He not only reaffirmed the calling of Solomon, but took swift action to crown his young son as king and announce it loudly for all the kingdom to hear. So while Adonijah and his friends celebrated a feast They heard the trumpet blast and the loud rumbling of the people rejoicing and shouting, Long live King Solomon. His plan, Adonijah's plan, had failed. His power evaporated like the morning dew at sunrise. And now he feared for his life. Solomon would surely have him killed, or so he thought. So he fled to the altar of God and took sanctuary there until Solomon promised not to kill him. In his wisdom, the young king promised that if his brother acted in a worthy manner, he would be safe. 
but if he provoked wickedness, then he would die. A new era had dawned, and now Solomon would rule not as the warrior like his father, but as the wisest man who ever lived according to the Scripture. Dear God, we thank you for the powerful stories of the Bible, for your word, which is infallible, inerrant, true, and trustworthy. May we live by your word. May we love your word. May we lean into your truth every single day. May we find in you wisdom and strength to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so very much for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. We are so very grateful for the millions of people who have downloaded this podcast. I'm Pastor Jack Graham. And when you download the Pray.com app and make it a priority in your life to listen to God's Word, your life truly will be changed. We are hearing reports from so many of the power of God's Word in their lives. So let me encourage you to pass this podcast on to others, to share it with someone you know, someone you care about, because the Word of God truly will change lives. And if you want more resources on how to experience God's power in your life, be sure to visit jackgraham.org. We would love to connect with you and for you to connect with us. Again, that's jackgraham.org. God bless you. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.